On October 7th, every year, fans of the American writer, poet, and editor Edgar Allan Poe pay tribute and remember him for October 7th every year marks the anniversary of his death. We read and share his work, watch films based on his work, and some who are in Baltimore on that date pay their respects by visiting his grave. His death on October 7th, 1849, will be forever shrouded in mystery, and that mystery will never be solved. Fitting for the father of the detective story, perhaps. The mystery begins when Poe arrived in Baltimore in September of 1849. He had just taken a steamship to Baltimore from Richmond, Virginia, where he had been lecturing and raising money for the publication of a new magazine. He was on his way home to New York. We will never know why he stopped in Baltimore, and we will never know where he was when he disappeared for the next few days. And he didn't have his last drink at a popular Fells Point watering hole. The curse begins on October 3rd, when he's found incoherent on Lombard Street. A printer named Walker took him to the nearest public place, a tavern called Gunner's Hall. The building is long gone, and nothing remains from Poe's time. Gunner's Hall was being used that day as a polling place for a local election. Relatives were summoned, a doctor, an acquaintance, and Poe's uncle by marriage, Henry Herring. They misdiagnose his symptoms and think Poe drunk. He is eventually hustled into a carriage and taken to the nearest hospital just a few blocks away on Broadway, Washington Medical University. Today, a teaching facility called Church Home Hospital. The attending physician, Dr. Moran, realized that Poe was not drunk, but didn't fully understand what the serious matter was as Edgar Poe slipped in and out of consciousness for the next several days and then died on the morning of October 7th. His death brought him greater fame, but his death was a curse that haunts him to this day. From the first erroneous idea that Poe was drunk to the lectures Dr. Moran gave for the next 30 years, embellishing the tale of Poe's death with each telling, and the cruel obituary published by Rufus Griswold, Poe was forever painted as a friendless, lonely, bizarre alcoholic and drug addict. The ugly picture persists to this day. No, Poe did not die in the gutter. He was not drunk when he was found. Poe was not a drug addict. In fact, Poe was, at the time of his untimely death, the opposite of all of these things that persist to be the paint with which his portrait is painted with to this day. He was to marry a childhood sweetheart. He swore off drink as a promise to her and joined a temperance society. He was feverishly consumed with raising money to publish a new magazine. He was about to embark new chapter in his life when death took him instead. Poe was buried in a Presbyterian churchyard near his grandfather, with few people attending. His grave remained without a marker for many years. In 1875, 26 years after his death, a monument was erected in his honor in the corner of the churchyard, built by generous donations from fans and pennies collected by school children. Westminster Hall was built over a great portion of the graveyard in the years before Poe's body was moved. His wife, Virginia, rests there, as does his aunt, Mariah Clinton. You've seen what these places look like in 2016 as we pay our respects to Poe. As fans of the author, we must remember the complex man he was and gently correct false stories that haunt him.